the same bubbles that tell you reach out if you need a friend. Don't kill yourself. Reach out. We'll help you. When you reach out for help, they tell you you're crazy. They tell you like you're being dramatic. They tell you you just want attention in the worst way. They tell you, oh my God, your life's not even that hard. Why the f Why? Why would you do that? Good job, guys. Hello. My name is Soraya and I'm 28 years old. I live in the Netherlands and recently my euthanasia request for my mental suffering got approved. You guys know I have a whole theory on chosen death versus suicide, which I think are distinctly different things. And so I think like for me hearing this story, I had a lot of thoughts. So you just saw the girl. We'll go back to her face. Okay. This is her. She's 28 years old. She has borderline uh, autism and depression. And she has decided to unalive herself. She submitted her proper applications. She did get chosen. The therapist she was working with basically said, there's nothing more we can do for you. It's never going to get any better. So she has borderline autism and depression. I think everybody in this audience has borderline autism and depression. I mean, I think I have borderline autism and depression. But I, to be fair, my depression is a symptom of my borderline. So now that my borderline's in remission, I'm not depressed anymore. I haven't been depressed in four years. And then autism, like, we're all autistic. So I'm sitting here like, you know what I mean? That's interesting. So I started to ask myself, okay, what situation would I be in where a person who's autistic and borderline and depressed, that would be enough? And to be honest with you, I do think... That's why I attempted unaliving most of my life with those things. Not that I'm saying I have autism, but you know what I mean. With all of those neurodivergent things and all those struggles I was having, I did want to Then I found therapy, but then I found philosophy. And I think your meaning crisis is tied to this. It's interesting that her therapist has basically given up on her, which gives me two theories in my mind. And I want to hear yours. Is she unaliving or choosing death? because there's literally no way she'll get better or is she not introspecting, introspecting enough to get better? Because sometimes I wonder about these things. I am very interested in that. Because if she's a one and she's genuinely not doing anything to get better and to introspect, of course she'd want to die, but maybe not. But if she's a two who has a bad therapist, maybe she'd want to unalive. Or maybe if she hasn't introspected enough to find her meaning, maybe therapy wasn't enough. So it's interesting. So again, I'm interested, I think, sort of, of why she decided to come to this point and why her therapist is saying she can't get better. Now, of course, I think you should be able to live and die how you want no matter what. I don't think you necessarily have to be in a position where like you have to be terminally ill or have a good reason. I don't think you have to have a good reason to live. I don't think you have to have a good reason to die. I think you should make sure that it's something you want. Now she has a partner, she has a life. So that's what's also confusing to me is like you have a partner. Well, it's obviously not the love of your life to some extent because like, Borderline and depression and autism, they're things that like you can live with. Borderline goes into remission. Autism is definitely something she can live with. I think she's autism one. So what are we doing here? I really feel like I could change this girl's life because there's no way her therapist, like I just don't understand like what happened. I'm not somebody who's like pro-life or something and I'm sitting here pretending I care about human life or something. I care about humans' lives, but not human life. Does that make sense? I care about humans' lives. I care about people's lives. I don't care about human life. I don't have some weird religion that's telling me like, I gotta keep the human species going. But I do think you should suffer with wisdom. And I'm not sure of the wisdom in this case. Lexi says my issue is that it seems like she made this choice because her doctor told her she couldn't help her. So it doesn't feel like she made the choice based on objective truth. Yeah, I'm very interested in that. Now, of course, people covering the story are doing it with like a lot of bias. And so that's why I'm struggling to find here, let's see if we can find... Before I go any further, I want to say content warning for assisted unaliving. Soraya lives in a small village in the Netherlands, and she has just been approved for assisted euthanasia in May. She has a loving 40-year-old boyfriend and lives with two cats. She suffers from borderline personality disorder, autism, anxiety, and depression. And she came to this decision after her doctors basically told her that there was nothing more that they could do for her. And she has been clear from the very beginning that if and when she runs out of options to help her, if she is still feeling as crippled by her mental illness as she is, that she would not like to continue. And she's part of a growing number of folks in the Netherlands and other places where euthanasia is legal. 
Um, and that is something that we really do need to start talking about. I'm seeing euthanasia as some sort of acceptable option brought to the table by physicians, by psychiatrists, when previously it was the ultimate last resort, um, a healthcare eth ethicist at the Theological University Campen in the Netherlands told the New York Post. And goes on to say, I see the phenomenon, especially in people, young people with psychiatric disorders. So I really, really, really think the doctors can't help her anymore because she needs philosophy intervention. I really think the work that I do is the other half of therapy because therapy is your brain, dudes. It's your trauma. Philosophy is your consciousness. I really feel like I, should, I could change this girl's life, bro. Unless she's a one and doesn't want to get help. Unless she won't eat the cupcake. But if she will eat the cupcake, there's no way she saw the right doctors or therapists. There's no way she's having the right introspection journey. It just doesn't feel like the right reason. And I'm, I don't want to project that onto her because again, I have the things that she has and I've turned my whole life around and I'm like not again I haven't been diagnosed with autism so take that one off the table half my audience is autistic my siblings autistic like I'm probably autistic I just feel like I know enough people that there's got to be a better reason but also you don't have to have a reason but also if she wants to live and she sounds like she does and she says that it's just a matter of her pain someone's not doing their job somebody is not doing their job and it could just be her and I know that sounds really harsh, but what if she's not the one doing the job? Do you get what I'm saying? Because a part of me is looking at her like, what are you doing with your life? And I'm not quite sure she's the one doing the work. You know what I mean? What if she is actually purposely not being introspective? For her case, the context in which I'm hearing it sounds a little bit like giving up to me. So if Soraya arrives at her May date without deciding that this is not what she wants to do, a doctor will first give her a sedative followed by a drug that will stop her heart and her boyfriend will be at her side which I just like can't even um, imagine. I just really can't even fathom that. The doctor will spend some time with her. Then she will ask if, if she is ready. And obviously like her boyfriend's not the love of her life. Like I could never even imagine like moving away from the love of my life because of, again, and I don't want to say this because I don't want to compare our suffering. I just feel like borderline, depression, anxiety, fibro, like all the things I struggle with. I found my literal soulmate and leaving him for any of those reasons sounds so weird. The only reason I'd want to do like assisted unaliving is if my brain started to go. That's my preference. Otherwise, like I'm going to you're stuck with me, bitch. We, we doing life together, bitch. We in love, bitch. We doing Luffy for the next 10 years, bitch. Like, what are you talking about? But also like this guy is a bunch of years older than her. Maybe she's settling. Her life feels like it's settling. Probably doesn't have her true understanding of her relationship with her consciousness. Like there's so much missing from this story. And a part of me does know that a part of the population will just like within reason, again, come to the conclusion that they want it, like Dr. K said, but they don't have the right tools to make a different decision. And the doctors who are helping them aren't giving them the right, th the right tools. Just because you're going to a therapist doesn't mean you're getting the right tools. Just because you say you want to get better doesn't mean you're making the effort. Just because, just because, just because, just because, right? So which category is she? Um, then Zariah will take her place on the couch. She will once again ask if I am sure, and then she will start up the procedure and wish me a good journey. Mm. This is honestly just like one of the most devastating things that I have read or um, I saw. Okay. It's not that devastating. People unalive themselves all the time. But also, you know, what's more devastating is children are sitting under rubble right now in Gaza. That's devastating. A grown woman in a privileged position choosing to die with the intervention of her government is hardly devastating. It is literally called a choice. This is we're pro-choice, baby. You know, I don't know if this is what devastation looks like. This just feels like a choice. It does not feel devastating to me. Devastation feels like people against their will and their consent being forced in torturous situations because other people want to give them like a sadistic in like interaction. This feels like a grown woman making a decision. Is it the most logical decision? I don't know. I haven't talked to her, but it certainly doesn't feel devastating. Struggle with anxiety and thinking about this. Um, and I medicated for anxiety and thankfully my medication works. Um, but just thinking about a young woman who has so much life ahead of her feeling. Maybe. Does she? Does she have so much life ahead of her? Like life is not worth living if she is feeling the way that she is feeling just is truly devastating. What do you guys think of this? Weigh in here on the procedure. Do you think this should be something that she is able, that a person should be able to do for themselves? I want to know. I want to hear what everybody has to say about this. Like, I want to know the details. I feel like we're missing information here. I wish this beautiful soul well. Oh, we don't know she's a beautiful soul. She could be a horrible person. My See, we don't know she's a beautiful soul. You're making a lot of assumptions. 
She could literally be cats in the back alley. She could have voted for Trump. That's a joke. She's from the Netherlands. We don't know anything about this woman. People assume too much that this is a good person. We don't know anything about her. She could be a horrible person. Maybe she wants to unalive herself because she secretly did something very horrible and can't live with it. We're assuming she's good. I'm assuming there's something missing from the story because it doesn't feel like a full story. But at the same time, I think you have the right to live and die how you want. So I think you have the right to die how you want. That people are making it sound like this beautiful soul. She has so much to live for. We don't know that. We don't know that she has so much to live for. We don't know that she's a beautiful soul. We know nothing about this person. Alice says about the, but also is the Netherlands bubble more open to death, less taboo, less scared of it? Yeah, for sure. Caitlin says pretty equal good. Mm hmm K.O. says a lot of people believe that pretty person equal good person. That's true. They do. I like how both of you thought the same thing. Mm hmm We let people smoke. We let people do lots of things. And I think society should let those people do those things because at the end of the day, like, why are we here? Now, I think this goes back to our bubbles and our expectation of what your obligation is to humanity. I don't think you're obligated to be healthy. I don't think you're obligated to be thin. I don't think you're obligated to be mannered. I don't think you're obligated to do anything. I think the idea of obligation comes from a construct humans created to keep themselves in line, which is fine, but it doesn't mean everyone adheres to it and it certainly doesn't mean it's objective. It's interesting too, her boyfriend, her life. I really think this is ultimately an introspection issue. But more than that, like she's, I don't know if she's tried every medical professional. Maybe she needs to come to America and do DBT. I don't even know if, you know, you know, DBT is like an American thing. You know that other places don't offer DBT. So when I recommend DBT, which it might not work for you, by the way, it might not. And you, it might be useless to you. But like in places in Europe and in other places, like they don't have DBT just because we have it in America. So that's the other thing where there's like kind of an assumption we're all making that, Oh, she's gone to every kind of doctor possible. We don't know that. We don't know how many, like, how many ways she's tried to do a different thing. It's funny that people want to use like logic and facts and numbers and generalizations. So if we're using generalizations of a point, like who, who, how to help the most people, it's certainly not the minority of people that are choosing to die because that's a minority of people. So if you're worried about facts and logic and you're like, we need to help the most people possible. Okay, well, it's definitely not people who want to die. Helping people who want to die is a niche community. I want to help people that want to die because I don't think they actually want to die. I think some of them do, but I don't think all people want to die. So the people who don't want to die feel like they have to or they need to. I was there and I'm not there anymore. And I think those people are much more interesting and a niche community that I'd rather focus on. But you also have to be ready to live your life. And a lot of people aren't ready to live their life yet. So introspective work isn't gonna help you until you're ready to live your life. Until you're done being depressed, you're done being sick, you're done thinking like this is my whole life. Now you might suffer from depression your whole life, but the relationship you will have with it will be so significantly different. You will be living well depressed ironically enough. Hayda says, I was under the impression that some people need therapy for decades. Seems unprofessional to tell her she can't be helped at this stage. It's interesting if she's 28. Yeah, it seems like so something like something's missing from the way they're telling the story. And I wonder if her doctors are going to have to come out and do like an interview. Alice says, do you think her being public about this is her final way of finding help? Even if she's doing it subconsciously? I thought about that too, girl. Yeah, I thought about that too. I thought, what if she's reaching out to get one more person? And I really think it'd be cool. You know what I mean? I think it would be really cool to see if somebody could reach out to her. One comment I've been seeing pretty consistently, which is very frustrating and kind of makes me want to support this girl even harder, is people that are like, I can't believe you're yourself over depression. I can't believe that's the reason. Yeah, well, yeah, you're part of the problem. Because no one's going to find a justifiable, if you think it is wrong to kill yourself, then you're never going to understand why someone wants to kill so this is the Dr. K conundrum. This is why my therapist was so amazing because she could understand why somebody would want to unalive themselves. So there wasn't any bad reason to want to do it. There was only like, is that really the reason? And what if we fixed it? Would you still want to do it? Well, I don't know. I've never not had the problem. Dilemma is that she was told that she can't be fixed. And if that's the case, that's kind of amazing and an anomaly. Because like I said, people who get help for their borderline often go into remission. Depression and anxiety, we've done amazing things in medicine for those problems. And autism, girl, join a support group, join my community. We love autism. Autists be thriving. They have TV shows and Elon Musk is autistic. And I mean, it's not like they're not functional. Autism three is a little difficult, you know what I'm saying? But okay, but then what if you're in a community 
that thinks your depression is fake, thinks your anxiety is fake, think your borderline is like a curse. You're never going to get better. I don't know how good Netherlands is in terms of mental health stuff. America sucks. So I'm sure Netherlands is suck. Brooke says, what if somebody tells her she's not broken? Isn't everybody broken? I don't think anyone is not broken. I think we come out of the womb and we get broken because society breaks us and then we learn to rebuild. Kaylin says, it's honestly amazing to know people exist who have never wanted to unalive. My partner and I were just talking about, we were watching this video and I was like, it's interesting that the people who are criticizing this woman are also people that have never wanted to unalive themselves. So it's like, well, how are you going to relate? If you've never wanted to die, if you've never thought about it, you're probably looking at her like she's crazy. But that's how we're looking at everybody who does something that's so outside of our bubble, so outside of our understanding. I think that's why it's frustrating when people are like, hey, I really want to help you. But the only way they're willing to help you is within the construct of their bubble, which is why I say like, the road to hell is paved in good intentions. I don't need your help. I'm just trying to help you. I know that. But your version of help is hurting me. But it's but it's the good way. I, I, I know the good way to help you. I know you feel like it's helping, but I'm telling you it's not. How could it not help you? It helped me. I know it helped you, but it's not helping me. Yeah, but wasn't I right about this thing? Yes, you were correct about this thing, but not for the right reason. And so it's like, I know you feel like you're trying to help. It's like we're battling a world that wants to help us. They're going to suffocate us to death with their help. They want to help us so badly, they're going to kill us in the process. Road to hell is paved in such good fucking intentions, bro. Connor says, let's pretend it isn't crazy. Telling people that it's crazy to unalive yourself. I think it's crazy to think that it's crazy to want to unalive yourself. But I don't think it's crazy. And I don't think you think it's crazy that people would want to unalive themselves. I think it's crazy to not think that people would want to kill themselves. But I also think it's crazy to think it's crazy. No one is actually crazy. We're just humans. We're suffering. It is not crazy to suffer. It is not crazy to feel so in pain you just want it to stop. It is not crazy to have zero solutions and then to make a solution up. Nothing about that is crazy. And I think thinking that killing yourself is crazy, you're a part of the problem. You are part of the reason people want to kill themselves. Because you act like you're not crazy for thinking it's crazy. It literally is crazy. What do you mean you don't like living life? What do you mean? You don't like being single and alone and having to pay 90% tax? You don't like being single and alone and like you can't afford breakfast or food and your kid just died? I don't know, your, your mom just died and like everything around you is falling apart? What do you mean you don't like living? Oh my God, you just realized you're dying of stage four cancer and you're going to have to suffer for the next six months or you could kill yourself. Like, oh my God, what do you mean you don't like vomiting every day because you have a medical issue that they can't figure out? What do you mean? Life is so great, guys. Life is so great. You're judged if you want to die. You're judged if you want to live. You're judged if you want to mind your own business. You're judged if you just want to stay home and play anime. You're judged if you have a minimum wage job. You're judged if you're fat. You're judged if you're black. You're judged if you're a woman. You're judged for everything. Maybe you all need to keep your judgments to yourselves. And that's why people, by the way, unalive themselves in secret and don't tell people. Because like, why? how are you saying you're crazy, you want to unalive yourself? That person who's telling, like they would never come to you. Can you imagine going to someone and being like, I want to unalive myself. And they're like, you're crazy. You're just giving them more of a reason to do it. It's kind of insane. Like, it's kind of funny. They really try. But I know, I know you have good intentions. I know people have good intentions. Britt says, are most of them extremely premeditated like this? Or do people have an impulsive moment after thinking about it for so long? I don't know the statistics on that. Like, I don't know what's more likely. I think it's more impulsive a lot of the time, which is why I think suicide is not chosen death. This isn't suicide to me. This is chosen death. She's thought about it. She's done the paperwork for it. It's methodical. It's slow. There's no rush. So here she is now doing her thing. I don't think this is impulsive. So then I don't consider it suicide. I think suicide is when you feel, um, well, actually, no, I take that back. It is oh wait it is because she feels like there's nothing else to do oh it is suicide. i take that back i lied no this is because even though it's not impulsive she is making the decision not because she wants to die but because she doesn't want to suffer which is not the same thing okay then she is committing suicide, and i think that's not good i think she should actually want to die like it is the best option it is like the most reasonable option, but I not. But she said she wants to live, but she couldn't end her suffering, so that's why she's killing herself. Mm, which is not the same thing as chosen death. Chosen death is you are ready to die. Interesting. Yeah, I'm not very pro suicide. I'm very anti suicide. 
Yeah, I don't think she's seen all the possible solutions. Discord said saying it on the Discord because I felt like I had to say it. My family used to call things I did a cry for help and it felt like they were judging me because I was being selfish and wanted attention. In reality, a cry for help shouldn't be viewed that way. I do think a cry for help is selfish and asking for attention in the best way. You are literally doing the thing. That's why I hate these people that are like, just reach out, bros. If you're suffering, ask a friend. Well, I told you I was suffering and you not only called me crazy, but you told me that I would just wanted attention in the worst way possible. The same bubbles that tell you reach out if you need a friend. Don't kill yourself. Reach out. We'll help you. When you reach out for help, they tell you you're crazy. They tell you like you're being dramatic. They tell you you just want attention in the worst way. They tell you, oh my God, your life's not even that hard. Why the fuck? Why? Why would you do that? Good job, guys. Good job for missing the fucking point. That's why I don't trust these bubbles. Okay? That's why I don't trust these bubbles that are so virtue signally that are like, we really love, we really love life. We really want to help people. Then why the F when the person is literally telling you to your face, hey, I think I'm thinking about killing myself. Your reaction is, you're so dramatic, dude. What? Your life has never been hard, dude. Why would you want to kill yourself? Cool. Good job, guys. You really fucking nailed it on the head, bros. Lexi says you're describing my whole childhood, Brittany. Which is why Dr. K, which is why my therapist, which is why I think my attitude is the best. When people say they want to kill themselves, I go, make sense, bro. Your life fucking sucks. Let's try to make it better. Because if you're at the point where you want to kill yourself, something fucking sucks. Let's make it better. And it certainly isn't going isn't to come from your community because your community is probably contributing to you wanting to kill yourself. All your communities keep blaming your mental illnesses. Oh, well, if you didn't have borderline, you wouldn't want to kill yourself. I think you forget that I have to wake up every day and deal with your funky ass. Your community is more of a contributing factor to situations than they want to take credit for. It's not us. It's your brain. It's not us. It's your mental illness. It's not the world. It's you. Okay. Well, then I would like to remove myself from you because it's a me problem, right? No, 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 no. Don't do that. But every time you talk to somebody who says they love you, it makes you want to do it, bro, because they're literally the environment that's making you crazy. But it's not them. It's your mental illness. That never would have existed if you didn't grow up in that environment. I like how everyone out here talks about how life is suffering. Life is hard. Life is, you have to man up and make it through. So is life suffering? Is life hard or not? So when I say, hey, life is hard, it makes me want to and you say, no, it's not. So which one is it? Is life hard or is life not hard? Is life a big game we're playing or is life not hard? Is life easy? Make a decision. Ingrid says, I wanted to unalive myself the most when I was in school. I wanted to unli unalive myself the most when I lived at home. And I love my family. My family's so good. But I never want to unalive myself more than when I'm at home for too long. If I'm more at home for more than a week, I definitely want to unalive. It's an incredibly interesting environment full of love and food. But because we disagree on reality, it causes a lot of issues mentally. Because you're getting a lot of feedback from people that are like, oh my God, I can't believe you think this. You're crazy. Being told you're crazy makes you crazy, bro. You're not crazy. You're just in a moment. Now, don't get me wrong. I do think calling people crazy is fine within context. I like to view crazy. Oh my God, when I was crazy, but I'm not using a judgment. When people use crazy, they're often judging. Hey, you're being crazy right now. And I think sometimes that's true. And then sometimes it's judgy. So like, I don't mind being told I'm crazy as long as it's coming from a place of neutrality. Like, Hey, I think you're being crazy. And I'm like, Oh shit, my bad. Versus like, you're being crazy. You're the fucking problem. And it's like, damn, maybe I just need some fucking help. You know? Maybe I just need some fucking help. You got to know who to ask for help. Wolf says mental illness is crazy. Yes, but not all issues with mental health is mental illness. So some mental illness causes like a distortion in reality. A lot of it is environmental, right? A lot of it is not mental illness. Borderline isn't even a mental illness. But it's, I often say it's a mental illness because like I forget to categorize it correctly but it's not even considered like the same kind of thing. Like Dr. K was saying, people who want to don't have mental illnesses. 
often. Often it's an environmental factors that make them want to die. That's not a mental illness. It's literally deciding, like, should I make it another day through the Holocaust? Everyone is living their own version of like what is like too hard for them. I often think about the Jews during the Holocaust and I wonder like how many of them decided to unalive and why people kept going. Like I always wonder like what makes people keep going? Obviously hope, a belief in God, family, friends, the hope they'll be able to see themselves out of the situation. What makes people keep going? Why don't the people in Gaza just unalive themselves? Because they have a hope that tomorrow it will be better, that somebody will liberate them, that they don't have to live through this every day. There's always a hope people have, even when they're in the worst situations possible. And I think a lot of people that are suicidal have a hope. The question is, are they able to find the hope themselves, regardless of how shitty their environment is, or not? Because your environment is probably a huge contribution, a huge, in my opinion, a huge contributing factor to the reason you want to die. It's not even, that's why my work is centered around you. It's around you. The world is not going to care about you. It just doesn't. Okay? Like the world doesn't care. The people on the internet don't care. People don't care. You have to care about you. And then you have to make a decision about how to form a bubble or choose a bubble that lets you be you in the most capacity, so you don't have to unalive yourself. Man says it could just be a biological programming to stay, try and stay alive, maybe. Yeah, I think biology plays a huge role in why people in horrible situations don't think about unaliving. And then I wonder about the humans who don't have that. Like the humans who consider suicide or consider unaliving, are they just having a different relationship with their biology? I would say yes, because I think we're all biology, like you can't escape your biology. So when we say things like rise above your biology, we're just saying something that sounds good but isn't actually as accurate as it could be, right? Ah, Bruno says, I believe that I have suicidality. What I actually crave is, um, no, I believe that when I have suicidality, what I actually crave is a sense of control over my life. I think that's a huge part of it. To be honest with you, I think that's a huge, even for me, sometimes I think of my, I'll do it, bros, is my neurodivergent like, are you telling me what to do with my life? Because that's what pisses me off. That's why I think I have autism or neurodivergency or ADHD or some PDA, something. I have something in my brain that when people tell me what to do, I'm like, what? You're making me feel suffocated. (coughs) Excuse me. Oh, sneezed on stream. At least I didn't fart. That's a joke. That goes back to the conversation we had earlier about rudeness. That was a joke. Okay. But you know what I mean? I do think I have this thing in my brain that goes, what? Hmm? Hmm? Are you telling me what to do? And it's like, you know, I joke that it's because I'm a brat. But no, it literally is like a, it's like a demand avoid. It's like a huge demand. Living is a huge demand. How dare you demand that I live? How fucking entitled are people to be like, you have to live? Oh. You're so entitled, bro. You're so entitled. I just, I hate entitlement in people. You know what I mean? Conrad says that's just borderline, I think. No, I don't think any of that has to do with borderline. No, I don't think that's a symptom of borderline at all. It could be, but I don't think so. I actually think it's neurodivergency. I've, maybe, do you guys know anything about it? Borderlines in the audience speak up. I don't think that has to do with borderline because borderline is about abandonment. So people telling you to live would be, if anything, the greatest thing. Because they're saying, I want you in my life. Right? I think it's neurodivergency. I actually do. I think it's like a, what? Because like life is a demand. Which is why my job is to be as introspective as possible, extrospective as possible. To recognize like I get to pick and choose the demands. Because they're constructs. You know? Alex says we are creatures that nature versus nurtures enmeshed, entangled, that it's almost useless to try and it's the one or the other. Well, I don't think it's useless to try to introspect or extrospect. So when we try to, you know, figure out which one is happening, what we're trying to figure out is do we have a greater understanding of the self, right? Ingrid says, 
uh, no, 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 it's pathological demand avoidance. Yeah, I think it is too. Like, I think it is like, it is so deeply strong in me and it doesn't relate to anything uh, according to what I know of my borderline, you know? Madeline says, for me, it's the symptom of autism that I got diagnosed with two years ago. Mm -hmm. SP says, do you believe that most people who attempt suicide tend to regret it in the last moment? Um, well, it's not about belief. I think the studies actually show that. Like people who live show that they would have regretted it. But I do think suicide is the wrong answer, guys. Do you guys understand that I do think suicide is the wrong answer? Because suicide to me is not killing yourself. It's feeling like I have no other option, so I have to kill myself even though I don't want to. These are not the same thing because the why is totally different. So of course, I assume most people regret killing themselves because I don't think if you are suicidal, you want to be suicidal. That's why I think suicide is so specific to me. But ready, being ready to die is different. Lots of people are ready to die. That they wouldn't regret dying. They're ready to die, right? Like, have you ever... Have you ever died with somebody? Have you ever seen someone die? Some people are ready to die. Like it is the end of their life. They're ready. Okay. That is not the same as somebody who doesn't want to die, but thinks the only thing they can do is die. Life is a fool.